right. Praise the Lord and good evening tonight. God bless you, everyone. Let's give God praise tonight. We say praise the Lord to everyone in the house and to our viewers. I'm Pastor Sanchez, and you're listening to the Power of Pentecost telecast coming to you live right here from the sanctuary, the King's Chapel Assembly, 703 East Jefferson Boulevard, Fort Wayne, Indiana. We are the church, everybody's somebody, and you belong here. We want you to call up a brother and sister, amen. Call up a friend, let them know, amen, that your weekly Bible study is live on the air, amen, and all of these channels tonight in Jesus' name. We are um, going to look before the Lord in prayer, and uh, we are again fasting and praying for you, not just our own families, but we're praying that the Lord will do a mighty work of healing and of deliverance and of saving in your families. Lord, we strengthen your families, and we know God is more than able to do so because God so loved the world that he not only gave, but he keeps on giving in Jesus' name. Uh, let's look to the Lord tonight, and then we'll get right into the word of the Lord. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, tonight we thank you and praise you for the opportunity once again uh, to be able to come before your throne and to look into the perfect law of liberty tonight. We pray in Jesus' name that you speak to our hearts, anoint our minds right now to be able, Lord, to receive your divine seed. Open up our understanding, give us clarity, give us wisdom, Lord, and we pray, Lord, just have your way in this taught word tonight. And we will praise you and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Let's give God praise tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Good to see you all tonight. And it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We had our ABSA last week. And again, I want to encourage you to go back and check out the ABSA council page, uh, which we put links on my page. Uh, Juan Sanchez, or you can go to the King's Chapel Facebook page and look at all the services that took place last week. We had a wonderful time uh, in the Lord, and even though uh, you may not have been able to be there physically, you still can get a good, you still can get a good taught word, a good preach word by electronic means in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Tonight I want to talk to your hearts on the subject tonight. Uh, giving my worries to God. Let's let's say that. Giving my worries to God. And tonight, I I I, I want to reference again. We we use the book by June Hunt. And this was not in that book that we did for our devotion, but she had another book out, and and I thought it was such a great, uh, just some great teachings tonight. I thought I'd uh, use that tonight and be able to bring forth the word of the Lord. Because we're living in a time today where worries and the cares of this life have a way of sort of siphoning our energy. And when I say siphoning, you know what I'm talking about, sort of just zapping us, you know, slowly of all of our energy and sort of consuming us in, in what we call the cares of life. But as we look in the word of the Lord, we thank God that we have a God that we can cast all of our cares upon because he cares for you, amen? Uh, worrying is a natural state of being, all right? And it will come to all of us from time to time. Pastors worry, bishops worry, uh, deacons worry, mothers of the church. Things come to us because it's part of being, part of, of being human, amen? It's part of our natural being. And this is why it's very important that we understand we need a supernatural God Amen, to be able to care for us. Because how I many you know it's too exhausting trying to fix your own problems, trying to iron it all out. <laughs> In all of our ways, we, we can acknowledge the Lord that we can cast all of our cares on him. Why? Because he cares for us. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. And, and the Bible uses different words. It uh, talks about, you know, be anxious for nothing. And we know that has to do with worry. But in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. Uh, and you can, you can write that down, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Uh, for tonight, um, one, uh, Dave, you can put up our set of scriptures here tonight. And I just gave you that Philippians 4, 6 through 7. That's not in that list. But in, you can jot that down and you can go to that or add that to your notes. 
uh, do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything in prayer and uh, supplication with thanksgiving, um, let your requests be made known unto God. So we're presenting it to God. And the beautiful thing, the peace of God that transcends all of our understanding will be upon us. Amen? God will grant us peace in our hearts and our minds. So tonight, uh, as we look at the scriptures, uh, I understand that's sort of small there, but let me read it out to you there. Our first one is going to be Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah 58 and 11 tonight. Praise the Lord. We're going to go from Isaiah uh, 58 and 11. We will move along uh, to Matthew 6:25. Matthew 6, 25, 31 through 34, uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19, uh, verses 19 and 20. So we will uh, pretty much stick with the order of reference of scriptures that you see uh, right there on the screen or on the overlay. Amen? In Jesus' name. So let's go to Isaiah. Amen? Go to the Old Testament here. Praise the Lord. Lord, we thank you tonight. Amen. Again, Isaiah 58 and 11. Now, as we look at the subject of worry tonight, um, Worry can keep us somewhat stuck in the mud or like in a ditch. And it's therefore not pleasing to God. It's one thing to get stuck, but it's another thing to get unstuck. Amen? And so we do not want to worry. Uh, we want to get out of this ditch if we find ourselves in that. Um, and here as we look at these scriptures, we can give a little bit of, um, we can gain an understanding of what the word is saying for us. So we don't want to, in, it, in everything we do in our lifestyle, we don't want to be displeasing to God. We want to honor God in the way we think, in the way we act. Amen? So uh, being anxious or worried, uh, it, you know, does not show trust in God, but again, it's human nature, but we're going to show how, what the word says tonight, all right? Also, we think about worry, it comes up against the scripture because the scripture says one thing, but then uh, the enemy or disbelief is the other thing that wars against our mind. Amen? So worry could actually reveal here that we really uh, don't believe God the way we think or the way we ought to uh, because the Lord said he would provide all of our needs, all right? So Isaiah 58 and 11, and when you have it, you can say amen. amen. All right, let us read. It says, And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. All right? Now, don't be offended here in the King James that talks about uh, and make fat thy bones here. What the writer is, is basically saying is that we will be healthy in God. Amen? Uh, look at that. He shall guide thee, not sometimes, but Isaiah 58 and 11, he shall guide thee, how long? Continually. Amen? He shall guide thee continually. And what a beautiful thing. He says, satisfy the soul in drought. So when everything else is dry around us, all right, the Lord will water us. He said, you should be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And we know we need water to survive, right? Not just naturally, but I'm going to spiritualize it. We need the water of God's word. Jesus said, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture says, out of his belly shall do what? Flow rivers of living water. So let's give God some praise for that. Amen. Let's give God praise for that. 
Tonight we're talking about giving my worries to God, giving my worries to God tonight. Um, so worry here, you know, and again you ask, well, is it a sin? Uh, well, the question is, does it go up against God's word? Uh, could it prove disbelief or unbelief? I would have to say yes. And could it prove actually also or show disobedience? And I would also have to say yes. Because here when we look at worry, worry reveals that we are personally uh, responsible and concerned for the things, now this is important, that God has already promised to provide. So worry reveals we are taking on personal responsibility and concern for the things that God has already promised to provide. All right, and I know that's that's hard to to wrap our minds around because we're so y'all we're so used to doing things and fixing things, and you know we've been taught from our from a youngster to be independent and to be you know have self worth and have a work ethic and what have you. But uh, again, we have to realize everything that we do, we do it according to the energy and the help that comes from God. Because without God, we can do nothing. Amen? Let's give God some praise for that. Amen. Now, as, as we move along here, um, let's go to our next scripture, Matthew 6.25. And you, you'll remember here as we go to the New Testament, Matthew 6, 6 chapter, verses 25 through 31. And in this passage or this area, we'll look at verses 25 through 31, and then we're going to drop down to verse number 34. All right? Amen. Matthew 6, 25. All right, you have a say, man? All right, let us read. Jesus says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for the body what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment. Amen. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, and in other words, they're not out there working, sowing, <laughs> neither do they uh, reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, are ye not much better than they? Which of ye taking thought, can add one cubic unto his stature. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, look at that, in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. All right, let's move down, verse, uh, down to verse 31. Wherefore, if God so clothed, and that's something, so clothed, <laughs> the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, or clothe you, O ye of little faith? All right? Verse, th uh, verse 31. Therefore, now again, whenever you see a word, therefore, it's because of what you read previously. Always tie it back up to what you previously read. Or for this reason, therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or with us shall we be clothed, right? Let's drop down to verse number four, 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of, its, of itself. Sufficiency unto the day is the evil thereof. Now, let me give some balance here. This does not mean God's going to drop things out of heaven into our laps. Amen? We know and we were taught coming up, if you want a job, you can't lay there in bed and think somebody's going to knock on your door. You got to, you know, wash your face, comb your hair, put some nice clothes on. Amen. You got to learn how to, how to do a, 
uh, how to fill out an application and, uh, and, and all those tools and things that show you to be a well-studied uh, employee ready to go out and let that employer know, hey, you need to hire me. So faith without works is dead, right? But the Lord will provide, all right, he will provide they're the means for us to be able to take care of ourselves. Um, I even tell people sometimes they don't realize it, and you know we have a young a lot of young people that hustle and do things, and that's fine. But you have to also think about the system. If you don't pay into the system, Social Security, uh, then you can't expect to draw from it when you get to be in your 60s. All right. So uh, if you're not putting something away. And if you're like a uh, sort of self-employed or what have you, you still need to put something away because in your older age, you don't have to, you don't have to work when you're 80 years old. <laughs> uh, you want to be able to draw back on some of those funds that you have to put in. Come on, somebody. Amen. So there is, there is works all along the way, but the text lets us know here that if the Lord is willing to take care of nature, the fowl of the air, Okay, the birds. We are much more valuable than the birds. Amen. And I think another writer said, "Not one of them falls from the sky without he, without he knowing about it." So let's give God praise for Him taking care of us. God will do that. And, and let me say this: even in Fort Wayne, Fort Wayne um, really is a great place um, when you're struggling and and going through transition. We have soup kitchens, uh, we have clothing um, banks. You know, there's a lot of ways to be able to get food in your stomach and to, yeah, healthcare, there, there's a lot of ways to get clothing, to get food, and for you not to be sort of out there, so to speak, all right? Um, even, well, I don't want to elaborate, but you all know. You, you know what we have here in our city. So let's give God praise, all right? God, God makes a way. Um, Let's move on a little bit further tonight as we, as we talk about giving our worries, and I would say all of our worries to God. Uh, another thing the enemy desires to bring about is destruction. Worry has a way of slowly eating at us. It not only allows our mind to be not in order, but it has a way of working on this temple. Remember, our bodies are the temple of the living God, right? Um, it has a way here of weighing on us, and through worry, many times physical ailments could take place, uh, high blood pressure, heart trouble, um, all type of ailments, uh, cold sicknesses, because your immune system will be lower, because your worry and your anxiety is higher, okay? You understand me? Uh, when your resistance is lower, then you're easily to have illnesses and things take place. Um, stomach disorders, okay? So a lot of these things we, you know, we need to ask ourselves, Lord, really, am I really trusting you the way I need to? Am I taking you at your word? And I, what I believe we need to do, we need to get out of the driver's seat, which is hard for us to do because we like driving, don't we? <laughs> we need to get over into the passenger seat. And as a saying, Lord, you really take the wheel. Amen? Because I mean, no, whatever the Lord takes the wheel, he'll never steer you wrong. He always knows where he's going. He doesn't need a GPS or a smartphone or anything like that. And as long as we are riding with him, riding with his word, Amen. How many know we're in great hands? <laughs> great hands. Amen. How many going to ride with the Lord? God will take care of us. Uh, remember, the Lord is our shepherd. He's our provider, and he is our guide. Um, let's go to 1 Corinthians here, and we talked about the temple. So let's go to 1 Corinthians uh, 6, chapter, verse number 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We'll look at verses 19 and 20. Again, happy to see you tonight. Appreciate our viewers connected online. And again, we're talking about giving our worries to God. Giving our worries to God. And again, it's a natural thing to worry, but it's supernatural for God to take control of it. And we have to trust God enough 
that we're going to give it to God and trust him to make a way for us. I believe in all of our ways as we acknowledge him, he will direct our pathway. Amen? All right, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, 6th chapter, verses 19 uh, and 20. Praise the Lord. Let's read it. It says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. How many, how many times have you ever heard people say, I'm my own man? I'm my own woman. No, you're not. You belong to God. Amen? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now, in order for your body to be the temple of the Holy Ghost, uh, God's got to be in that temple. Amen. You've got to be saved. Now, to those who are not saved, all right, uh, it is God's will for them to be saved. But actually talking to the church today, you and I as believers, and there's a, 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 just a peaceful grace knowing that, hey, I'm, I don't belong to myself. My body and the whole person Okay, the whole person. God, how many know God cares about the whole person? Cares about the mind. Cares about the body. Of course, he cares about the soul because he came to save our soul, right? So in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, in other words, the Spirit of God dwells in you. We are born again, which is in you to see the preposition in, uh, which ye have... Of God, so we didn't purchase the Holy Ghost at Myers at Walmart. Amen. Thank God it wasn't for sale. But Jesus is the only one that can give the Holy Ghost to us, right? Amen. What you have of God. And ye are not your own. It's important for us to remember that as we as we think about giving our words to God, like, like Lord, I don't belong to me. And therefore I'm not gonna own these things here that I cannot control. I'm going to take you at your, you at your word, all right, I'm going to trust you. Amen? Because God was here way before we were. Amen? Guess what? He'll be here when we're gone. <laughs> and everything in between, we need God. Look at verse 20. It says, For ye are bought with a price for, there, there, there's that word again, therefore, or for this reason, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, as you're taking notes, for since we are bought, all right, with a price, the precious blood of Jesus, for that reason, glorify God. When we think about glorify, you think about honoring God. We think about the word magnify to make him larger. I find from time to time I have an app on my phone and it has a magnifying glass. I remember my mom, you know, back in the old days, they had real magnifying glasses when you needed to see something small. Y'all remember the phone books years ago uh, before we had smartphones? You had, you, had to, you had to break out the phone book and it was like that thick. But you you pull that magnifying glass out and you make things larger. All right? Well, I use one on my phone. When I can't see small print, even with my glasses on or off, what have you, all right, I'll open up that app and it'll make that tiny print so much larger and readable. And God is saying here, I want, I want to be made larger in your life. I want you to magnify me. All right? Magnify the Lord. I want you to glorify me, glorify honor. I want you to magnify me and honor me. So since you're bought with the price in verse 20, for this reason, glorify God in your body. Look at the conjunction. And in your spirit. Is that Jesus calling? Tell him we're at church. I got that from a pastor's meeting. Their phone went off too, and they said, if that's Jesus, tell them we're at church. That's all right. But look here. Your spirit, verse 20, has to do with your attitude. Because you see there, that's a little s. 
All right? Glorify God in your body and in my attitude. You think about your attitude, think about the way you think. Think about your disposition. When you hear that word disposition, first thing that comes to my mind, sometimes you see people have a pleasant disposition. All right? Usually those two go together. But disposition is the way you think. Um, sometimes in our type of language, we say a person's feeling some kind of way. <laughs> and when we say it like that, well, what kind of way are they feeling? Usually when we say it like that, people are feeling um, sort of negative or bad, you know. You say, why are you feeling some kind of way? Well, to be specific, why are you feeling so bad? Why are you feeling so angry? You know, uh, you know why are you coming at me like this? So again, the way we think, all this has to do and couches in the word of worry. Amen? So if we're going to honor God in our body and in our spirit, the way we think, remember in the text, body and spirit belong to who? God. See, look, look at the preposition or the possession there, which are God's. Amen. God owns my body. He owns my spirit. So if I'm going to represent him, I've got to make sure I put Sanchez down, all right, and not show the ugly part of flesh. I mean, we all got an ugly side of flesh. There was a lady at the council. I won't say who she was. First lady might know her. But... <laughs> She came in the church and she had feeling some kind of way and said, you don't want to see such and such come out. <laughs> and the person that told me the story said, well, you don't want to see so-and-so come out. <laughs> I don't know why people have to posture sometimes. They, they sort of got to feel like, you know, like you better recognize me and, you know. But, you know, people need to put self away. Too many people showing self and showing arrogance and showing pride and just trying to be all that when, hey, we belong to God. That's right. That's right. It's, it's all flesh, right? Let's give God praise. Don't, don't we want to honor God? So under this 1 Corinthians six nineteen through 20, I say this because the enemy is the author of destruction. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy so he wants to destroy not only the way we think, he also wants to destroy our bodies. Because think about this worry, and let me just give you all a little quiz here. You can't watch a TV show, whether it's a sitcom or a movie or anything, you all tell me, unless you see something in it. People cope with things by doing what? In movies and sitcoms and TV, they need a what? They need a drink. Have you ever looked how much alcohol is pushed as an everyday way to cope? When they're stressed, the first thing they do, they pour them, what, scotch or brandy or whatever, I don't know. I know it's, I know it's an alcoholic beverage. And they think, wow, I need to calm my mind and to relax. People think here, look, if I'm worried, I need something to relax my nerves. That's no way to live. Because over time, consuming that alcohol, all right, brings about a destruction to the body. And then when you end up with cirrhosis of the liver, you can't say God did it to you because you put that in your body. Amen? And on the flip side of the coin, now we have to even talk about here when it comes to worry, uh, 2024, how they're legalizing marijuana here and there. Not that they care about people. Not that they want people's minds to be at ease. It's all about the love of money. Think about back in the, in the uh, bootleg days when they were making moonshine or what have you. Well, I guess the government thought if you can't beat them, join them. Why should the mobsters and all the ones who are making money hand over fist, you know, be doing it? Let us, the government, get in the game. Come on now, don't get quiet on me now. So now we come from alcohol as a placebo. People thinking they need that to calm their worries or to be at ease. 
to marijuana, where now parents are getting high with their kids and I guess just passing joints around like it's uh, bottled water. What does that bring about? Destruction. See, just because, it does, just because it's socially acceptable does not make it right with God. Because the devil's very shrewd. Everybody and their mama could be doing it. But look how many people are being destroyed because of alcoholism. Amen? Let's give God some praise that we know, we know where and how to handle our worries. We know how to give it to God. Amen? Uh, that's under the subject of destruction. So I wanted to bring about, because as you're looking at 1 Corinthians, we, do not, we must not have our spirit attitude uh, brought down to destruction or our body. Amen. We've got to learn to trust God. Uh, another category under here, when it, why it's important to give our worries to God, is also is because we, we desire to honor God. Uh, the enemy bring, wants to bring about dishonor. So let's go to Matthew, uh, our next one here, Matthew 5 and 16. I'm enjoying the word tonight, amen? amen. Ma Matthew 5 and 16. So when we think about dishonor, the enemy is very shrewd to be able to take the honor that should belong on God and us magnifying him to shift, to shift the focus, rather, or the attention off of the all-sufficient, all-powerful God, amen, which we know in Christ Jesus, and to put it on human beings and make them feel like they are sufficient or they are good enough in and of themselves, all right? So ultimately worry, look at this, it has a way of undermining, all right, our witness to others. Because it says that God is not all powerful and also God is not worthy of praise. Amen. Because if I need to go out and fix my own uh, situation, which really isn't a fix, just putting a Band-Aid over something, I'm dishonoring God by drinking by smoking, amen, by giving my, my body over to the tangible things of the world, it brings about a dishonor to God. But how did it get there? It got there because initially of worry. So don't let worry drive you to dishonor your body. Amen. Come on now. Are, are you with me tonight? Because it will undermine your Christian witness. Because when individuals look at us, they, they, they look to see, okay, you're shouting hallelujah, you're jumping around on Sunday in church and everything like that. But what about, as we say on hump day, what about Wednesday? What about when you're having trouble with the missus or trouble with your husband or trouble with the kids? How do you handle stress or the stresses of life? How do you handle a hard day on the job? Am I making sense tonight? Amen. How do you handle that? So, so the enemy is very shrewd, like, sort of like water eroding uh, upon bricks or upon uh, a hillside. As it, as it keeps on, the waves keep on hitting at it. It has a way, sooner or later, eroding uh, the footing of it. And next thing you know, you have it falling down. The enemy is very patient. He doesn't care if you kill yourself slowly. As long as you keep killing yourself. And this is why the psychology even, well, you know, I, and we have to watch this as saints. Well, you know, I, when I drink, I don't get blasted. I, I just, you know, take something and calm my nerves and I'm not sloppy drunk. Don't buy that false philosophy. Come on, let's give God some praise now, amen? Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Amen. Amen. Now you might say, well, that's for pastors. No, that's for everybody. Amen. That's not just for the clergy. That's right. <laughs> not just for the deacons. The enemy, that's for the layman too. The enemy wants to bring dishonor to every soul that he can. Amen. Amen. So 
this, this, this undermining our witness is very, very important, right? Now, Matthew 5, the fifth chapter, verse number 17, all right? Look what the Lord says. Matthew 5, 17, what's it say? Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill, all right? Um, I'm sorry, I read, I read verse 17, uh, verse 16. If I said 17, I meant to say 16. Let your, uh -huh, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Okay? So I jumped ahead to verse 17. Forgive me, I didn't mean to throw you off there. Let your light so shine. So you're not letting your light shine if you're letting things, a worry, drive you to do things that don't honor this body. It shows you're not trusting God the way you should. And again, never want to let the enemy put you in a place where you compromise your godly or saintly values. And the enemy is very, enemy is very shrewd. So, example, instead of trusting God, let, let's use finances for an example. And I'm not going to stay in this long. Instead of trusting God, all right, when the Lord said, give the tithe and the offering and watch me open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, you won't have room enough to receive. The enemy say, okay, you don't need to do that and wait on God and take God at his word. I'm going to show you how to get some quick money. So if you came in off the streets... And you did that quick money before you got saved. The enemy said, hey, you still know how to do it. Get a hold of those old buddies. Get some drugs. Get this and that. Make those contacts and make some quick, fast money. Are you with me? But again, that brings dishonor. Y'all awful quiet in here tonight. Everybody in here saved? Maybe I'm making too, too much good sense here. Amen. Come on, let's shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> let's give God some praise. Not only will he make you not trust God with the tithe and the offering again, which is his, but because of worry, feeling you had to fix your finances, so get some quick money, but he will also bring you right back uh, to what we talked about with the federal government or the state government. Let's get you some scratch-offs. You can't even, because the law now is for the whole country. You ever wonder why, you know, before, a few years ago, before we started seeing all these commercials, well, now it's nationwide. You can gamble in, in every state. So that's the, no such thing as conservative state. Or, no, everybody's in on it. So if you're worried about finances and needing more, the enemy says, don't take God at his word. All right? Don't worry about your finances. Do something about it. And it contradicts the word of God, which God says, bring the tithe and offering and don't rob him. Worry could push you to go and gamble. And I was some saying, well, pastor, you know, that's only a dollar or two. It's only five dollars. I'm not hurting anybody. You know, if I lose five, that's no big deal. Well, the enemy always has a lot of philosophy about that. With a scratch off here and a scratch off there. Here a scratch off, there a scratch off, everywhere a scratch off. A drink here, a drink there. Here a drink, there a drink. But let me ask you, are you, are you any better off? Have you gained? Or are you still worried? Same worries, same issues. Sure, you can, go, you can get high and be off in La La Land, but just sooner or later you got to come down. This is a good holiness word tonight. <laughs> come on, somebody. And as we're looking in Matthew 5 and 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Is drinking and smoking and gambling good works? No. 
Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify. Again, think about honor. Your father where? Which is in heaven. And also, where is your father? <laughs> He's in you, right? And don't put it on God so God understands. And then don't use this phrase, well, we all just sinners saved by grace. First of all, if you save, you're not a sinner saved by grace. That's what you used to be a sinner. Runners run, swimmers swim, and sinners sin. Come on now. And that's not the first time I said that. I haven't said it in a while. But sinners practice sin. Saints practice holiness. Y'all making me nervous. Y'all awful quiet in here. I'm not speaking Japanese, am I? Am I speaking Japanese, Deacon Lewis? Runners run. Swimmers swim. Sinners sin. Amen. So we were sinners, but now we are saved by grace. So if any man or woman be in Christ, he or she is what? A new creature or creation. What else does it say? Old things are passed away. Behold, no, some things, a few things. All things are become new. So ask yourself, are all things new? They should be, right? Amen. I'm not saying anybody raise your hand, but I'm saying you know what the old things are and you know what the new things are. Amen. Now, there was a time when we first got saved, and maybe, maybe you didn't know saints don't smoke until uh, you got saved and came, came, came to church, and, and like, uh, saints don't smoke cigarettes. Saints don't drink alcohol. Amen? And you learn what saints do and how to use the power within you, right? I mean, oh, this is a good lesson about not worrying. Amen? Because it takes trust. To replace all these vices and things. And this is important here because, again, the honor, we want to not, uh, we don't want to dishonor God. We want to honor God. All right? Let's give God some praise. Amen? Let's go to our next verse here. Oh, my time is running out. Colossians. Let's go to the book of Colossians. Uh, chapter 3, verse number 2. We may, we'll try to get through everything tonight. If not, we'll, we'll come back at this same subject. Colossians 3 and 2. All right? Let's throw in verse 1 for good measure here. Colossians 3 and 1. If you then be risen with Christ. What's that mean? That's really saying if you're saved. I'm paraphrasing. If you're saved, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection. You see that? When you set your affection, that means you've got to set your mind, the things that you love in your mind, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. All right? Set your affection. So, no matter how many alcohol commercials or Budweiser commercials or no matter how many laws are made for gambling and getting high, that's not your affection. Your affection has got to be God, loving God, serving God. Our affection is the word of God, loving to come to the house of God, loving the word of God as it's being preached and taught, loving the name of Jesus, loving holiness, loving the people of God. Amen. Are you with me? Now, Here's some things here as I went through her book. Again, I'm just giving you some highlights of what I, what I had studied tonight. I thought it would be good teaching for tonight in the Word. What are, what are some differences? You can write this down. What are some differences between destructive worry, all right, destructive worry. Let's look at some differences between destructive worry and constructive concern. What are some differences between destructive, all right, destructive worry, what's going to tear me down, and constructive concerns? When you construct something, you build it up, right? 
Well, let's look at some contrasts here. Let's look at some differences. Destructive worry, what it does, it paralyzes. When you feel paralyzed like you can't move. Constructive concern motivates. And the emphasis is on concern. All right? So destructive worry paralyzes. I just can't go forward or backward. But constructive concern motivates. And when I think about motivation, I think about I have to get from where I am, point A, to at least point B. I can't think about MNOP until I move from A to B. Let me at least have some forward momentum and let me get motivated in God. My thing would be the first thing, believing that I can do all things through Christ. We know Jesus can do anything, right? But do you believe you can do all things through Christ. If you do that, you will be motivated. The second one here, when we look at destructive worry, decreases creativity. So I just can't, I can't think <laughs> to do anything. Decreases creativity. Constructive concern increases creativity. How to be able to do something in a better way. Now, as I'm even teaching this tonight, I'm even thinking that when it comes to even pastoring and ministering, sometimes we as pastors, you may not know, but sometimes we hit dry spells. And we think, well, okay, let me preach about uh, the lame man. And, you think, and the enemy says, oh, they done heard that before. Let me go to this one. Well, they done heard that before. And when you preached about everything in the Bible, Lord, what kind of creative way can I bring it out this time that people haven't heard before. And that is a challenge. And let me give you an example. It's like, what do you do with hamburger? How many ways do you make it? I don't know. Uh, what about meatloaf? You know, how many ways can you take a uh, chicken and <laughs> make it that they want to eat it? Stir fry? Give me, give me, give me, some, give me some names. Y'all talk to me. Baked chicken, broiled chicken. We all relate to fried chicken. <laughs> so, for the person that said teriyaki, so you're still using chicken, but you have to. You're learning how to be creative with the meat that you're using. So sometimes we, yeah, jerk chicken. Sometimes we we get stuck. And well, I, I just feel like I can't be creative. Could it be? Because of worry. Because I'm so worried that I, 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 I you know, and, and, and believe me, this spins out in all different areas. Making your marriage creatively uh, romantic and what have you, you know. So decreasing uh, the destructive worry um, decreases creativity. Con constructive, think about building up, increases creativity. Destructive, let's look at this heart, prevents, oh, here's a big one prevents uh, taking the initiative. Initiative means starting something. A lot of times they say, well, I ain't going to start it because if I start it, I may what? What'd you say? I'm not going to finish. Why start something I know I'm not going to finish? Why fail? Right? Prevents um, taking the initiative. But constructive concern promotes the initiative, promotes, builds up, promotes the initiative. Destructive worry results in anxiously fretting or worrying. But constructive concern results in calm focusing. And First Lady could tell you about some things. She's a, an excellent coach in various areas, but there are different things and different psychologists and things that do things to show how to calm yourself or ground yourself. Be aware in the moment. Um, a couple of days ago, they had the uh, uh, March Madness with the women and with the men. And some of the previous superstars were saying here, uh, and I think the guy's name was Terry. What's the actor, Terry? Uh, 
he wanted to shave head and big muscles and everything. Yeah, Cruz. Okay, there you go. And he was on there. Then they brought in Magic Johnson. And, and, and what they were saying to these guys that are getting ready to go out and play the college championship, don't lose the moment that you're in. He, Terry Crews said, you know what, I, I thought about the fame and the highlight. And when it came, I think it was a basketball game, he said, you know, I, I saw myself going up to make the layup. And he got the steal, and he went up to go to make the layup, but he missed the shot. Because he's already thinking, wow, when I make this, I'm going to be the star. My name's going to be in the paper. People are going to be talking about me. I'm going to be all that. But he was so thinking about stardom down the road he missed, he missed the moment. He missed living in the moment. Can you know what I'm saying? Don't miss your moment and every day that you're in service for the Lord. Don't miss your moment of being with your family. Don't miss your moment of being with your wife, being with your husband. Don't miss your moment of uh, parents being with kids. Don't miss the moment. Whether you lose, I'm talking about a game now, whether you lose or win, Enjoy the moment, all right? And I thought that was very good. That was, that was very good. Uh, live in the moment, all right? So constructive concern results in calm focusing. If you're focusing on what you've been trained to do, you do well in that moment. But you have to be calm. You got to block out the noise. And then you'll be able to think clearly what I've been, what I've been trained, what have I been trained to do when trouble comes? Since I'm a saint, I, I can't be anxious. I can't be worried. I can't jump out of the frying pan into the fire. I gotta pump the brakes and I gotta breathe. I may have to get in a car and just go out to the park and sit and watch the sunset and take a few deep breaths. Because when worry is coming around you in all different areas, I've got to focus. Are you with me? Amen. And that's hard to do when you feel like, oh, i got to hurry, got to go, got to hurry, got to go, got to hurry, got to go, got to do this and that. What did Jesus tell Martha? He said, you worry about many things. But you know what? Your sister, Mary, she's enjoying the moment. Because where do you find Mary? Sitting at the feet of Jesus. And look who tried to get her away from the feet of Jesus listening was her own sister. Who could move you away from God easily, if they could, would be your own family. So Mary, uh, Martha gets on Jesus to tell Mary, come have her help me. Jesus stands up for her and says, wait a minute, she has chosen the best part. In other words, you could take a, a page out of her book because she's doing what needs to be done. I mean, somebody say focus. Destructive worry attempts to control the future. Just what I was saying. Destructive worry attempts to control the future. Constructive concern, on the other hand, attempts to improve the future. Attempts to improve the future. Destructive worry fears the worst. You ever hear somebody, oh, you know, the world's coming to an end. I saw someone on the internet, Mark of the Beast is already out. I think it's, they said back then it was Obama. And then, and then, then I guess it's Biden now. And most people say it's probably Trump. <laughs> Fearing the worst. Well, I'm not going to go there. I want to, but I, I didn't paint it. I just, just got to zip it. <laughs> Constructive concern hopes for the best. So destructive fears the worst. Constructive concern hopes for the best. Destructive worry here distracts the mind from what's important. Somebody said, keep the main thing what? The main, the main thing. Some people go all around. No, that's not the main. The main thing is right here. Let's stick with what? The main thing. So worry distra distracts the mind from what is important. 
everything can't be important. Everything can't be a priority. But constructive concern directs the mind to what is important. So you have to stay on task, right? Don't let anybody take you away out in left field. Bible says, you know, and when it when it talks about even false type of teachings and things like that, fables and asking endless genealogies. No, don't don't even go there. Don't waste your time or your breath there. Amen. Um, destructive worry may sound like this. I'm so worried that my child might drown that I'm never going to let her anywhere near water. Because maybe it happened to me. So that person ends up not even learning how to swim. Constructive concern says, I'm so concerned that my child can't swim that I've made arrangements to give her swimming lessons. And you see in that example, this person is not saying I'm going to teach them, but I'm going to trust the system that there will be trainers there that I trust would teach her how to swim with lifeguards and all the techniques there. I can put that child or that person in somebody else's hands, but I'm making the arrangements to do this myself because I want to be, I want to be, I have a constructive concern. So don't let our fears keep our children down or keep anybody down, all right? Now, well, our time has run out. Um, I got a lot more to teach on this, but uh, we weren't even to get through everything here. Um, we'll pick it back up. We'll pick it back up later, right? Let's give God some praise for his word. Amen? All right. The song said, don't worry, be happy, right? <laughs> who, I don't know who sung that. Was that Bob Marley or... That's an old song. But I can tell you how to not worry and be happy is trust the Lord, right? That's right. Amen? Right. We are not careless, but we are careful. Right. Amen? Right. Careful to keep our trust in the Lord. And tonight as we uh, have our prayer number up and we wrap up tonight, um, are you worried about anything tonight? Do you feel tonight that there are a few things or some things that's totally out of your control. Are you saying tonight, Pastor, I've got something weighted, you know, it's so heavy weighted on me right now, I can't even think straight. And if that's you tonight, I want to implore you to call the number you see on the screen. And as soon as I say that out of my mouth, I know what the enemy is saying because he, the Lord let me know. He said, well, I tried prayer before. It doesn't work for me. If you first don't succeed, try, try again. Prayer does work, but you need to be persistent in going to God. When I think about the woman in the Bible. The man is upstairs asleep. Uh, in the bed with his family, she keeps on knocking on the door. And I think the judge or whatever, you say, you know what, if I don't get out of this bed and get down and answer this woman, she's going to drive me crazy because I'm not sleeping at night. This woman needs something. So he goes down and he answers the knock at the door. Amen? I want to encourage you tonight, you need to knock on the door of Jesus. All right, and you need to let him in. You need to trust him to come into your life. You need to trust him to bring him, if you permit me to use the word, bring him into your mess. Bring him into your craziness. Bring it into your world that makes no sense. God already knows about it, but he's saying, do you trust me enough? And do you know that I love you enough that I want to come into that? And when he comes in, he's a God of order and he's a God of control. And he's a God that will be with you. So if you're willing, again, to get out of the driver's seat tonight and get in the passenger seat, then you, call, you need to call the number for prayer. And you need to say, it's not my mother, it's not my father. Like the old song, it's me. It's me. It's me, O oh Lord. I'm the one standing in the need of prayer. 
I know there's one prayer, but I need it. So quickly call the number tonight. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for things that you're worrying about. We may not be able to give you a strategic answer, you know, other than the fact that the Lord will help you. We'll do whatever we can to point you in the right area, but we know it all starts with trusting the Master Jesus. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Could the Lord perhaps be allowing trouble in your life to get your attention and to let you realize that you're not in control? Has God left some things there to let you know that you're not as big and mighty as you think you are? The Lord allows situations to come in our lives to humble us. And if we humble ourselves, we will be lowly and we will be meek, but yet we, be, we will be submissive to the will of God. So, Lord, you're trying to tell me something. You're trying to tell me something. Let the troubles and things that are squeezing you, let it push you toward God. Don't let it push you to taking another drink or getting high or uh, even worse, ending your life. But let the troubles usher you to the Lord. All right? I'm going to leave you with the word that we read earlier in this Bible class. The Lord said you will be a well-watered garden. All right? In time of drought, you will be well-watered. Hopefully you've been watered with the word tonight. And God wants to continue to water you with his word. But you've got to be in the right location. Location, location, location. You've tuned in tonight to hear that the Lord loves you. God wants to save you. We love you at King's Chapel, and we know the Lord wants to save you. So will you call the number, again, you see on the screen. Tonight, you can repent. You can be baptized in Jesus' name. Tonight, you can be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. You might be thinking, well, what about my husband? What about my wife? I don't think they're going to come with me or not. I'm going to tell you something hard. You leave them. All right? Now, I'm not saying get up and get out the house, but I'm saying you leave them to come to God. If nobody wants to serve God in your house but you, then you need to be here. Somebody, I often say, needs to be the Moses of their house. So you can't wait on somebody else because you can end up being lost, thinking I want everybody to come in with me. When Bishop said, our Father in the Lord, when you did sin, you didn't wait for everybody else. You just went out and did it. So why not take the initiative and lead, let the Lord lead you into the kingdom of God, all right? Take the initiative and call tonight. You can be born again of the water and of the spirit, and you can cast all your care on him because he cares for you. God bless you tonight. We're out of time. Thank you for joining us tonight. And again, go back and listen to this word all over again. Let the Lord bless you. We'll see you in our next service right here from the King's Chapel Assembly. I'm Pastor Sanchez, 703 East Jefferson Boulevard, Fort Wayne, Indiana, the church where everybody's somebody, and you belong right here in Jesus' name. God bless you, and we love you to life.